the network sends 50 bucks. Thank you so much. He says, the grandpapa return. Welcome back. Person. Thank you for calling me a person. Uh, I will not read the actual word that you used. Uh, Emily has been making a trial as a co-host at the beginning. And she was pretty awesome. Uh, but... Her speech led to a, a strike on the channel. And so as a businessman, and this is something that you should learn if you're a nationalist, uh, you have to put your existence before anything else. This, this is exactly what we need to do politically, but it's also what I need to do at the YouTube level. So my, the existence of my channel is unquestionable. Then we can adjust with how we do things. Um, we, we can adjust. Our, there's lots of things that can change. But one thing that cannot change is the fact that th this channel exists. Because I look at what we've done, for example, interviews with David Duke, the Frame Game reports. All of these things have values for decades to come. And so I'm proud of this journalistic work. Now, there's some things that you can add to a channel that would lead to the destruction of it all. Hate speech is one of them. Now, I don't, I don't have a position against hate speech. I don't really care about hate speech. As far as I'm concerned, all kinds of speech that are non-deceptive, non-fraudulent should be allowed. But... Uh, there are companies like YouTube that do care about hate speech. And I understand, I, un I see where they're coming from. They don't want their uh, platform to become a dumpster of shit. And to be honest, I I'll tell you that even if I, I don't have a stance against hate speech, to be honest, people who do hate speech usually, they don't have much else to say. And that was the case with Emily. Yeah. I tried to teach her that she could phrase anything she wanted to say on this channel, but that she had to phrase it in a way that was compatible with YouTube uh, rules. She refused to learn. I mean, you could see it for those of you who, were, who watched the episode live. I was like explaining to her all of the boundaries that she cannot cross. And five minutes later, she drops... Uh, co comments on minorities and various comments which under the YouTube rules could be hate speech uh, so beyond that because that's one thing I cannot partner with some someone like that because first it gets it got my channel banned from YouTube secondly one thing I will note to people who are like JF is cocking JF is censoring uh, think about it is Emily Yukis doing that kind of speech on her channel I've never seen that. So Emily wants to do something on my channel that she doesn't do on her channel. <laughs> There's some people who, uh, who say Beck JF. What did Beck Talaska accomplish in his life, guys? What did Beck Talaska do that will be retained decades from now? Nothing. Beck Talaska doesn't have anything to protect and I don't care what he does. He's a crowd agitator. Good for him. I, I, I don't have issues with him. It's not someone I would associate with because he doesn't have anything to bring to this show. Now, another problem with Emily, uh, beyond hate speech, is that she was coming here with conspiracy theories. So she was like, this particular child that died, that was a satanic ritual. Or, or this child who died, this was a satanic ritual. And uh, she, she, was, she was invoking satanic rituals and she was invoking pizza gate. Now listen to me, you little trolls. I'm not going to be the second David Seaman. Uh, what you come here for must be the truth and I must have a responsibility to ensure that what's being communicated on the public space is the truth. I'm not gonna invite people who bring conspiracy theories that they cannot defend. If I said this, if I allow this to happen on my channel, so you're not paying the price for it. You're someone on the chat. 
and and I've also received a message from Imagine Braving Rune, Braving Fucking Rune, who's not on YouTube anymore. And he was like, Jeff, I, I recommend that you slow down on this whole uh, oppression thing and uh, the control of information of Emily UK. So you should just move on and not talk about it. I don't take tips on these decisions. Why? Because my uh, method is to address any point and the Emily question needs to be addressed. Emily is incompatible with a surviving channel that keeps a credibility. Why? Because although I love Emily as a, an individual, she's bad. She's a bad journalist. I don't even know if she attempts to be a journalist. So maybe it's, maybe it's not an insult from her perspective. But let's be honest here. Emily Yukis is untrustable, unwilling to collaborate in business partnerships, unwilling to care for others. And that makes her a very bad person. I still love her because I'm a Frenchman and <laughs> she's, she's cute. And she's, she's not very intelligent, though, but she's cute. And in self-preservation mode, Emily does not have a long-term contribution to make to this show. This show is going to be about actual stuff, not conspiracy theories. I'm, I, I will consider, and I consider myself a journalist for the coming years. How can I bring someone who says these children were were killed for a satanic ritual when in fact it was shown in court that it was an accident. So beyond the hate speech question, which demonstrates a lack of empathy and a lack of willingness by Emily to follow rules that I don't even set, rules that I impose because they are de de my existence depends on it. Uh, so for the future, this show will not have co-host. I will take a co-host if there is a a, a, an amazing opportunity that shows up. We're talking about big names. We're talking about journalists who, who are already trained. I'm not going to do the teaching experiment anymore. So what happened with Lauren? But yeah, but, but just so you know, I am in communication with big names, people who know what they're doing. And this is the kind of person that I would do an exception for and I would get them co-hosts for two or three days a week but it needs to be people who are perfect and people who are such big names that you're gonna enjoy it and it's gonna be great I'm not gonna teach someone to become a co-host anymore talk about Lauren Lauren is a very intelligent person I have no problem with her but she's decided to leave the show I'm not gonna go through our whole DM that she sent me because it was two pages long and to be honest, I didn't even read it. I didn't even read the whole thing. It's too long. It's, it's high school concerns, okay? But basically, I read the last sentence and she's leaving. And if you want, I read diagonal, diagonally the, the, the Twitter DM that she sent me. And it's like, essentially she didn't want to be on a show and, and you've probably noticed that she felt bad about the old israel and jewish coverage and uh, coverage of questions that relate to the jewish question and the, the fact that david duke was here the fact that patrick little was here so you probably guessed that already all right because every time I made a show about this, she wasn't there. So this show was evolving in pa two parallel streams. There were the times where Lauren comes on the show, and there were the times where Lauren is not on the show. And then I would explore questions that relate to the Jewish question, which I find I've explored in a very sensible fashion. Now, Lauren Rose had another view of the right. She doesn't want to talk about this question. She doesn't know about this question. She thinks it's um, to her, to her, I mean, the way I interpret it, she wants to build an image on different subjects. Here's my thoughts on this. 
maybe there is a YouTube niche for far right speaking without talking about the Jewish question. Maybe because I, I'm an open guy. Uh, maybe there is, but from an intellectual perspective, you cannot follow this path and be honest with yourself and be honest with your observations of the universe and avoid this question. There was a problem with Lauren. She was not engaging with the content produced there other than when she was in the show. So she <laughs> and even in her in her her leaving letter um she does demonstrate that she doesn't even follow what's happening on this show. She says in her le leaving letter, I've seen uh, I've seen that you wanted to do shows with Emily you kiss and so it seems that uh, it's better that you continue with Emily you kiss. It's like you demonstrate that you haven't watched the show because I told on that very show that Emily Yukis couldn't come back and and I've told on my Twitter that Emily wasn't coming back. A break and uh, everyone on the chat, thanks for being here. Uh, sorry if the episode will get deleted, but I'm done uh, correcting and I'm done beeping. I expect professionalism. Uh, love to all of you. And, uh, and we'll see Emily back on Saturday, and I will be back on Wednesday. Emily, have a good night. Okay, thanks guys, see you later. I didn't watch the Warski coverage. I've had a couple of trolls come at me with memes that were emerging from that episode. I've banned them, I don't care. Uh, I, I've, I've actually fa fell on a five seconds part of, of Andy. And it was because I clicked on the video and, and I didn't care about listening, but I just watched se five seconds and it was essentially uh, him saying, uh, so, so Jeff is like, uh, he's like telling Emily you kiss to not say these things, but, but like, why? And I was like, okay, this is exactly the kind of low IQ interventions that I've ejected from my life. These people who comment on this, what are you waiting for? Invite Emily Yukis. I just gave you gold, right? If, if I was to listen to you, you seem to be implying that Emily Yukis, you seem to be implying that Emily Yukis hate speech is pure gold. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> You can become rich, Andy. You can become rich, Mr. Mitaker. Ralph Retard, go ahead, invite Emily Yukis and make something absolutely sustainable. You're gonna make lots of money. Why do, why do you think they give me these tips? It's because they're not true tips. These people are retards who are trying to display on the public space tips that they wouldn't follow themselves. Hey! Andy, why don't we why don't we reactivate the Chris Cantwell episode, you fucking idiot? Don't you want to make money, Andy? Don't you don't you think it's gonna be good for your channel? Hey, why don't you invite Emily Yukis? I'm gonna go on a Warski live with Emily Yukis, and we're gonna make some hate speech. We're gonna we're gonna say how we like killing some minorities. Of course, you don't want this, and I don't want this. Why? Because you know, Andy that it would lead to the destruction of your channel and you don't have the respect for yourself and your audience to be honest with them you don't want to tell them that you're just like me you wouldn't get Emily Yukis but go ahead, do it I can't wait for your channel to be the conspiracy channel of the year you're gonna be the next David Seaman you're gonna be a retard with glasses who tells false stuff on the public space and who will get ridiculed for the rest of his fucking life without a youtube channel <laughs> it's gonna be fun hello pinky culture how are you doing uh, okay so i'm gonna say that uh andy was wrong when with the whole chris cantwell thing but yeah, i think you're also wrong with the whole emily thing i think censorship in general is fucking gay uh, okay. and uh, yeah so and, both uh, of you have been cocks both so of you are, are canucks uh, so, uh, how much subscribers do you have on your YouTube account? I don't really upload much, but you know, I recently started uh, some making some content. That's not my question. 
Six hundred? I think around a little over six hundred, yeah. Okay. But it's a small uh, it's a small channel and I don't really do much. And so do you do you invite Emily Yukis on your channel? I would, hell yeah, I would. Okay. And what would you do once you get uh, a strike? Would you still invite her? You're acting like any channel that has Emily gets a strike. She was on like shows like Red Ice TV and several shows, and they don't have strike. Gavin McGinnis was a show that. Yeah, but on Gavin McInnes, she did not do the eight speech kind that she did on my show. So what she if said she the was? The fourteen words. The fourteen words wanted... is not eight speech. Still, like you got one strike, which okay, that's I feel bad for you there. Like I, I gave where you're coming from, but. What you could have done is, like, after the live stream comes out, you could later censor it by editing it and uploading a new video that's censored. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that work. Can you do it? Can you do a show with Emily Yukis where you do that? Well, I, I don't think I'll get a strike in the first place, but if it was like that, I would probably have to bleep out some stuff or cut out a few things in editing and post. Okay, well, if you're a video editor, uh, go ahead. You can do it. Okay. And eventually you'll outcompete me because Emily Yukis is this brilliant woman, right? She, like of all the women, she's she, not brilliant, she but out, she's very ah, charismatic. She oh, has, not. she is not brilliant, but she has a lot of. Uh, I guess her personality is very. It, it gets the audience very, you know, happy and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Okay, so uh, it is she's not, not a my big role. Brain, but... All right, so she she makes the audience happy. She can do that on your channel. And once you get three strikes, you can come back and explain to Papa Jeff what's your uh, what's your plan for the future. My plan for the future is to feed my babies. Do you have babies? Nah, bro. But like, look. All right. Well, get I'm fucked. Bye, bye. Oh, the Ralph retort is there. Hello, Ralph. How are you doing? How's it going, man? How you doing? D doing good. Uh, but, uh, all right. So, so what's going on with the Emily thing? I just caught the end of your rant there. I did. I did go back and uh, I saw that I was kind of mentioned. It was mostly directed towards Andy, I guess. But, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I, I was mentioning uh, names of people, and I would say, in line with Andy, I was saying, if any of these people have claimed the same thing as Andy, they are. Uh, they are being hypocritical, but it was not my intent to lab label you particularly as hypocritical. I don't know what did you okay. stand for with Emily. Did you say I was wrong? Um, no, actually, and I put this out on Twitter. You know, our show is different than your show, right? So, mm -hmm. it, I just heard my phone beep. Um, so basically, if we start censoring too much on the kill stream, it's not really going to be the kill stream, right? So it won't be the same type of show. So I try to keep a very light, um, a light censorship thing. And also, I've come to conclude that YouTube can pretty much you know, take down my channel anytime they want. They could even probably take down yours or Andy's. I'm Just, so happy you know. that you bring this subject because that's something I wanted to talk about and I forgot. I don't want to be in your position. I don't want my balls to be held by YouTube in two years from now. And if I had left Emily UK's episode and if I had left her do her things, there would be three episodes on my channel that could be bannable. And so that's what I want to avoid. I don't want anyone to be holding my balls other than beautiful females. Now, let me say this. The YouTube rules are very opaque. So even hosting somebody like David Duke could probably get them one day to just say, oh, well, you know what, we're going to shut this down. Um, even hosting somebody like Richard Spencer, Patrick Little, these are controversial figures that YouTube could honestly, you know, take you down anytime they want. I mean, it's their, it's their platform, right? So, um, I mean, I, I think I that... I think that they would get okay. drawbacks from doing that without a reason. There is not a single statement in these episodes that can be uh, qualified as a speech. And so I think that I've mastered pretty much going close to the line of hate speech that YouTube signals to me that they are willing to continue this association. They they are giving me strikes or temporary like punishment, but it does seem that they appreciate the work and so to the extent that Richard Spencer and David Duke they're not banned from YouTube they have their own YouTube channels and they survive so at, to that extent I, I feel like my episodes with them don't contain hate speech and I feel I've respected the rules. You know, our shows are definitely different um, what I've kind of decided to do is uh, put more emphasis on the 
the actual live experience and then cer certain episodes uh you know put up on the archive channel put up on soundcloud other other places to get it um while still keeping the the nature of the show now like i said they're two different shows but um i don't know i, I put a lot of value in, in in letting people say what they want uh now sometimes that might could get me in trouble but I guess that's just it's that's clearly just different like shows because my show relies on the long term credibility that is acquired by reporting proper facts. And so conspiracy theories are not welcomed here. I mean, I could let someone state the hypothesis, but I would offer uh, push back on what they say because it's not good journalistic practice and it discredit it discredibilize everything else that you do. If you let just one fact be questionable, on your street have time i was on vacation maybe i'll go watch it mm -hmm. if it's still on but actually i it's looked for it and it was oh uh, it's on the archive i okay. took it down i took it down today i left it up for a day and a half it really i could have left it up all the way i was just afraid um you know, there might be ah. some reporting on it um, so you are certainly but, not in a position to criticize me you do the same as me but i don't imply well, that yeah but i put it up me. elsewhere though but but I put it up elsewhere though, so it's not oh, like yeah. it's it's hard to find. Um, it's still it's still available for public consumption. But yeah, I have taken streams down. So we did the stream on Saturday. Actually, that stream had more views. That had like twenty thousand views where we were doing the Portland thing, and I took that down because I I figured the the anti antifa guy getting his getting his block knocked off might might be a community strike. So there there's some precautions that I take. Sure, um, I, I don't think that that's uh, like ignorant. I mean that's that's the smart play. Um, so. Um, oh, right. but I was going to say on on her actual episode, she was she was fairly well behaved. There's more controversial streams on my channel still up now. Um, so, oh, but that's that's know. also the problem I'm facing with her is that she appears on other shows. She doesn't do these things. She appeared on your show. She appeared on uh, Gavin McInnes. She's able to do shows without hate speech. Every time she comes on my show, she does it, and so this tells me. Either Emily is totally incompetent, which is very likely because she doesn't have much of a brain, but maybe she's also malintentioned against my channel. It seems that everything she does is aimed at breaking my channel. But maybe it's just no, I don't know. By the way, I'll defend her. I don't think I don't think she's low IQ or anything like that. I think that that might be a little unfair to. Well, I've never seen a good seen, idea pop out of her brain where I'm like, oh, this is very intelligent. I mean, she may be good in her animation skills. She's good at doing this. But as far as like blowing me away with an intellectual reflection, I think she's just entertaining. She has a good entertainment IQ. But when I when I told her you cannot do eight speech, now comment on this news item. There was nothing coming out of that brain. I mean, you could have had a... A, a donkey and the donkey would have done better yeah i don't know i'll just say that i enjoyed her as a guest and and i hope to have her back so i i don't know i think that's a little unfair to to go to that criticism especially when you i mean you were the one that kind of brought her in in the first place like did, you knew who she was though right i mean you did some research on her you knew she was oh i did research a, you know, and she sure. was entertaining but in terms of commenting on the news getting to know her it seems that whenever she's disabled into not being able to do a speech she doesn't pop out with any more comments so she's like very entertaining if you leave, leave her the tool of a speech but if you remove that from her she cannot generate entertainment on a long-term basis that's what i discovered by interacting with her week after week and the crowd also was telling me hey jeff uh, emily seems to be going down the more the more she progresses here the less inter as interesting she gets and that's what happens when you are a one-trick pony now you say it's an unfair critique it's your opinion but it's mine and so i'm free to express it and you're free to yours well, I'm not sure if you mentioned uh, the difference in person that you handled uh, the situation with Emily as in uh, in opposition to how Andy dealt with like Cantwell, where he was like just kind of laughing along with the jokes, and then afterwards, it's whenever he brought it up. As opposed to you, I felt like you you handled it in a more honorable way, actually like saying it to her there on the stream and then ending it. Yeah, first, uh, yeah, that that's why uh, that's why. I believe that Andy was uh, acting as a cock in the Cantwell case. It's that he didn't tell him on the stream. I told Emily on the stream, you cannot do that. I'm so and I ended the stream in the end. So I'm pretty proud of, of talking to her in her face. Also, 
when I ended up deciding a few days after that I would get rid of Emily because she then published the episode on Gabay when she was right there in my face telling me I won't do that and I don't do that and I didn't do that uh, and she did it. So that, then I realized, okay, we're talking about someone who is not even honest with her communication with me. I wrote to her an email first before tweeting about it. And I just let her know, look, this is the end of our association. You've published on GABA the episode that I decided not to publish. Therefore, uh, I don't feel that we can continue our association. That was pretty much it. It was a respectful email, but explaining that I can't work with you anymore. Yeah, and she said that um, she didn't think that what she did violated like what you were yeah, you had requested HR because it was like wrong. animated and whatnot. But I, I can agree where it would like still violate the spirit of your request. Yeah, my request was huh. don't publish the episodes uncensored, and I censored an entire episode by deleting it. And she published the episode on her gabai. Now she could make the argument it's not publishing. But if, if you understand the business, you understand that a Gabai tweet or a, a message on your Gabai is an act of publication. If you don't understand this, I'm not even interested in interacting with you professionally. Rahide says, you saved Dundee from becoming another stale anti-SJW figure, yet he spends hours shit-talking you on a stream. Screw him and don't stop making content. Absolutely. I mean... When, when Andy criticizes me, I don't really care. And in some way, I like the idea that I'm so much at the top of the food chain that that these parasites are trying to, to suck blood from me. It, it, shows, uh, it shows where I am on the food chain when he takes so much of his hours talking about me.